be my lady. I was called Lee Bug Boy. And I was a naughty kid. Oh my but my 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 moves are so old school. I said, you know that this means war, right? And he comes in, okay, boys, and he sits down. Okay. You will be singing before kings. Truly privileged am I to be here with you ladies. Hi, I'm Camille with Michelle, Jasmine, Jessica, and Gia, and you're watching G Talk. He is an award-winning singer, songwriter, actor, musician, dancer, record producer, and TV host. He is the founder of the Shining Light Foundation Philippines, and he is the first UNICEF Philippines National Ambassador. He is a survivor and a warrior from battling kidney cancer, a bypass surgery, to having type 1 diabetes. He is called Mr. Pure Energy due to his high energy dance performances. Please welcome a world-class performer, Edgardo Jose Martin Santiago Valenciano, more popularly known as Gary Valenciano, or simply Gary V. Woo! Woo! Hello, everyone. Yes. Why, why am I feeling a bit nervous about being interviewed by my wonderful ladies? And I'm like, okay, okay, let's go for this. But I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy that I was invited to actually be a part of this. So thank you so very much. Oh, we are so excited to have you here on G Talk with us, Gary. You're celebrating your 38 years in the industry this month, April. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see, I'm here in the studio and you know I'm already set up for other kind of work that I'll be doing later on. But yeah, you know, 38 years and still enjoying it, you know. Um, still loving what I do. That's awesome. Maybe in a little bit, we can get a sneak peek uh, in just a bit. But your life has been an open book. And that's actually why we want to play a two-minute alphabet fast talk game with you in hopes of getting to know another side of you. So okay, <laughs> let's see. All right. <laughs> so we're going to mention words or phrases. And you respond with one word or the first thought that comes to mind. Don't worry. You will have time to explain some of the responses. Okay, that's good. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready to be in the hot seat? <laughs> no, I'm not. But what can, I, what can I do? So I'll just go for it. Okay. okay well, Camille is going to start us off. You okay. got this, Gary. I'm going to start with the letter A. Assumptions about you. That I'm an angel. B. What's in your bucket list? A beach house. C. Most beautiful local celebrity. Oh, it's a list that varies time to time. But I'd say people like Catriona Gray. Two ladies that end with the family name of Reyes. That's Maricar Reyes, Christine Reyes, Jesse Mendiola. D, a signature dance move. Oh, that's the hat on the good. I mean, I can do a full shot, but it's basically that's what it is. Letter E, a movie or series that made you emotional. Movie would be the movie called Awakenings, and the series would be The Chosen. F, a fashion disaster. Oh, it would happen every now and then during the 90s. G, thoughts and ghosting. It, it reveals something about you that uh, many people probably would never expect it. Uh, ghosting is something I do not believe in at all. H, a favorite short hugo line with acting. With acting. <laughs> okay, let me try this. Wait, wait. Give me some time. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, based on what I actually feel. Okay, and so this is not something I'm pulling out from somebody else. But if I were to act it and she's in front of me, I would say, you know, you really, you really aren't my dream girl because you surpass that <laughs> it's hard to act when you actually believe that because that's my wife oh. surpassed my dream girl. okay letter i best impersonation be my lady Come to me and take my hand. 
and be my lady. That's Martin Rivera. <laughs> the other one is truly privileged am I to be here with you ladies. I am Optimus Prime. <laughs> <All about it. laughs> Transform and roll out. <laughs> Letter J, share something juicy about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Juicy about myself. Okay. Um, I don't know if people will find this juicy, but I am an adventurer, and I'm. I guess, I'm. The pure energy is the same on and off stage. Okay, a random act of kindness. Interestingly, I, I've done that, um, but I added two more letters to it, which was E and T. So it would spell out racket, a random act of kindness every time. And I actually have some uh, vlogs on that on my, I, I did that about four or five times. L, worst breakup line in your teens. Do I have to really bring that up again? I mean, you know. <laughs> no, because the line came from me. But wait, 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 wait. See, I. I the line came from me, but the act came from her. Oh. Okay, so I, I was there and I said, you know, I'm going upstairs. I'm just going to fix myself up. But you got when I come down, you got to tell me if you want to continue this or not. So I came down Whoa. and I said, well, and she said, and that's it. So if I didn't say that, maybe... We, it could have still been going, but it was leading toward that. Um, a favorite childhood memory? Christmas with my family. And a childhood mm -hmm. nickname you didn't like? I was called Libug Boy. If you don't know what Libug is, it's that black stuff you see on little boys when they play outside. Or black stuff that they have here. That's called Libug. L-I-B-U-G. And I was the <laughs> Libug Boy. <laughs> Letter O, most stylish outfit you rocked that will be trending today. Oh, my famous shoulder pads. I used to wear shoulder pads that would give any American football player a run for his money. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking like that. P, best prank as a child. My sister had a favorite baby doll and she really loved him. I think she called him Baby Andrew or something like that. And we had an argument. And I was looking through the doorknob like this, and I was trying to say something to her. And next thing I knew, boof, that face of that baby came on. So I couldn't say anything. So what I did was I got a felt pen, and I practiced my graffiti on that face. <laughs> and I just left, made my way downstairs. And when I was down far away from her, that's the only time I heard, <laughs> success. Letter Q, a question you want to ask if you ever come across an extraterrestrial being yo what's up no i'd probably i'd probably sit him down if he's not floating up in the air but if he was floating up in the air i would say can you teach me how to do that and because you guys we've been looking for you we've been wondering if you were out there can you teach me how to be as invisible as you you know in any place that i'm in but to be able to fly and to be invisible I think those are two great things I would like to ask. <laughs> so, letter R, a really funny psychic prediction about yourself. You know, that's funny because I've not had uh, psychic any, any psychic come up to me and tell me stuff. But I've had people who have prophesied. And then it's come true. Like one who said that I would be performing in front of kings. And that's happened. I performed in... The United, uh, the UAE, United Arab Emirates, and I have, you know, prominent people in front of me. Letter as the perfect serenade song. Oh, wow. I guess it would be, <clears throat> How did you know I needed someone like you in my life? <laughs> Freeze yeah, time or time travel? Time travel. You, most unusual fan request. No, I'm just ha I'm just happy that it happens with everybody else around me. There were two uh, incidents. One was, "Hi Gary, can you please sign an autograph for me?" I said, "Sure." Where's your paper? No, I want you to sign it here. <gasps> okay. And then the other one was to sign uh, an autograph, but 
on the inner thigh. And I think I was being tested, you know, somehow to see, let's see if Gary Valenciano is going to do this. So I gave my common but heartfelt <laughs> signature with words that said, God bless you. <laughs> nice. I knew, I knew it because I, you know, I signed and it was somewhere here, and I was like, okay. And of course, like, wow, wow. And then when they read it, what? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my the God. best word to describe you that starts with the letter V. Victorious. Okay, W, the best way to woo or make Suyo Anjali. Easy. Han, so and so and so, blah, 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 blah. We can talk about this over some wine. Oh. <laughs> you get my wife wine, cheese, uh, crackers, grapes, and some cold cuts. You'll be one of her best friends for sure, for life. Wow. <laughs> Letter X, a favorite X Men superhero. There are two X Men. I'm actually a DC guy, but X-Men, yeah, I like Wolverine and I like uh, Quicksilver. Why? Note to your 80-year-old self. <laughs> hey, Gary. You've gone through a lot, huh? <laughs> Are you, you ready to come home now? Okay, Z, what would you do if you were a zillionaire? Wow, that's even... I've never heard that word zillionaire before. So that means it's many times above being a multi billionaire. So I think that perhaps 90% of my being a zillionaire would go into making sure that the entire world gets the cure to COVID 19. Hmm. And the other 10%, which would probably still be in the billions, would be if I could still do this. It would be to have major concerts in different parts of the world, but this time to celebrate life. That's what I'd like to do. Oh, I love it! And on that note, you finished the alphabet game. <laughs> I especially love how your last response for the letter Z, it really shows your love for people intrinsically in the way you want to help them with COVID, but then also your love to perform. You want to give them that gift of, you know, celebrating yeah. life and enjoying music, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. While I still can, you know, I'd love to do something like that. You know, when you get to that point where people are totally aware of the fact that it's gone, it's finished, mm -hmm. it's, we're, we're, we're over and done with that season in our lives. Wow. I don't even know how I'm going to be when I step up on stage on my first performance. <laughs> and I'm in front of people and then we hear the sound of the live band. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be, I think it's going to go on for about a minute or two of just being there. And then, bang, and the music can just start. I'm sure you miss performing live, Gary. So in an effort to give you a chance right now, <laughs> could you show us some of your dance moves while you sing? Ooh. We'll dance. We'll dance behind you. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Person. Okay, this is an old one. Okay, so this is Hatao Na. So this is the So if I was to stand up. Bombs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I told you it's old school stuff, but I don't know. I uh, coming out on stage and seeing people enjoy it, especially the young ones, people your age, and they go, "Oh, okay." 
Yeah, I remember that. I remember my mom listening to that or my aunt no. listening to that. Some may even say my grandma used to listen to that. That's fine. As long as we're all having fun. I'm good. Even watching you on screen. Even watching you on screen, I thought it was a 90s video. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's true. True. But and I love it. I love seeing people enjoy it. You know, you know, doesn't we matter it. whether it reminds them of the 80s. Oh wow, you should see it when we do stuff stuff from the 80s. <laughs> oh man! Suddenly everybody's like, ah, and then their age begins to show. Yeah. The <laughs> And I'm often like I'm, I'm often like oh your age is now showing. A while ago you were not reacting to me when I said look at you guys standing up and so it's fun. It's always fun. I love that. Your eyes were just lighting up as you were doing it. I can't wait until you get to perform live again, Gary. But earlier you said you were a prankster. Can you share with us some of your most memorable pranks? School. I would often okay. So <laughs> we would always my classmates and I. Please know, okay, it's not just me. It's my classmates and I. We would go to um, the the supermarket, and we would buy what is rice paste. They would come in plastic tubes like this, like almost like uh, almost like toothpaste kind of containers, and you could squeeze out the the paste, and you could put it here. And it's to paste your projects in school. You can paste them all together. So what we would do is we would put it here on our fingertips, and then we would go, you know, and it would. Do to anybody we wanted. Oh. So sometimes a teacher would be talking, and then you see it go into her hair, and she knows nothing about it. So she, <laughs> okay, boys, now what you have to do here, and when she turn like that, you see, <laughs> and it's all of us going like that. I know, I know, I know. And then we had a, we had a, you know, in 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 school, in grade school, in elementary, we didn't have air conditioners then then in the classroom, so it's all these ceiling fans going like this and what i would do me especially if i didn't enjoy the subject or i would i would get lost and i would have no way to ask well, uh wait wait i i don't understand i would get pieces of chalk and i'd throw it up there oh. it would hit one of the class and then now the two are, well, you know in, in tagalog and then they start arguing then about maybe 20 minutes later i'll throw it up again and then it hits the teacher Hi! Who did that? <laughs> I know. Were you I ever was... caught? <laughs> no, I was. Well, there was one incident when I had like three packs of paste. Oh. And what happened? Wait, wait! I have to explain myself. Okay, I have to. This is no. This is. It was to my Filipino teacher. I grew up. I was born and I was raised in the Philippines, and I always had a hard time speaking Tagalog. Because my mom's Puerto Rican, so she's English speaking at home, and so are my other brothers and sisters. We were all English speaking at home, and how um, I'm taking you all the way back now, but it's in my defense because of what I did. So I was there in the classroom, okay, and I was a naughty kid. I was not, I was not the the type who'd get into fights or who'd smoke or drink in school, but I just like talking to my friends and you know and laughing and having fun. So one time. I was talking like this to my friend, and when I turned like this, the Filipino teacher gets me here, and he pulls me up, and he says, "I have been telling you to be quiet, in English. If you have a problem, you talk to me, okay, Mr. Valenciano? You promise me?" And I was okay with that because I've kind of gone through that several times. Problem is, there were a group. There was a group of young girls going by, and they were promoting their school fair, so they were going per classroom. And you know, during high school, the school I was in, it's for all boys. And then the school that was there was a school for all girls. So they would come to school and they would promote their school fair. So you know, bring everybody over the weekend, and it's a school fair and, and all that. And as I was being held like this, they passed by and they saw me. So I was like, I became this small. Wait, let me get the microscope. That small, and there I was being held like this, and so immediately I just kind of, I said, you know that this means war, right? <laughs> so what happened was this, this class was right before recess. Oh no, this class was right after recess, and when it was recess time and we were set sent down, I was the last one to leave the classroom, and I got the three packs of paste and I put it on the seat, and I. Oh. 
I gave it, I gave it my best shot to make it as unnoticeable as possible. So we came back up from recess, and he comes in. Okay, boys, and he sits down. Okay, ang gagawin natin ngayon, ano? And of course, everybody was laughing, and he's asking, "Why? Why are you? Why are you all laughing at me?" Okay, this is what we will do. And he turns around, and I saw the map of the United States on his butt, and it looks like a dark thing with Florida right here on the bottom part. But it was all taste. And I didn't realize, you know, and I, I I have such high regard for teachers today because I know how I was as a student. <laughs> so I know how hard some teachers have to, you know, deal with, you know, how hard it can be for some teachers. He was a good teacher. He actually was a very, very um, loving man. He was an old man and he had to go home all the way to Antipolo, which is up on the hills, and yeah. then come back to school. And... Um, he knew it was me somehow. But what I did was, you know, he was looking at all of us and saying, who did this? If none of you admit I'm going to fail all of you for the first quarter of the year. Me. I kind of turned on the switch. Like, you know, kind of thing. And I stood up and I said, sir, can I, can I say something, sir? What is it, Mr. Valenciano? I walked up right beside him and I looked at the class and I said, guys, Come on, be honest. Who did this? <laughs> oh my gosh! And who huh? Who I was I was uh, eighth, ninth grade, eighth grade. <laughs> oh here in the Philippines, at that time, it was, you get to grade seven, and then you go to first year high school. Mm -hmm. Then you have first year, second year, third year, fourth year. Then you go college. Mm -hmm. I was first year high school, so eighth grade basically and yeah i think that but he knew he knew he thought he called my mom and and they had a talk and you know what he told my mom he says you know your son gary is is a young boy i find so much promise in he just has to listen to me because i'm willing to be there to teach him after classes all the time wow. and of course my heart was broken and all my other classmates even if they were laughing they loved that teacher because he was just a good man and he I secretly did. loved you, Gary. No, he did. He did. Right? He told he told that he openly said, I love your son. He's a good young boy. He's naughty, but all these young boys are naughty. <laughs> but Mrs. Yeah, yeah. Pichano, I had to go back all the way to Antipolo. I come back to school. It's already 3 p.m. I I have a very hard time. I don't have a car. I only take the Jeep to go home. <laughs> 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 Yeah. His name was Mr. Maniago. I'll, I'll never forget him. Mr. Maniago, really nice fellow. But oh. I was naughty. Yeah. So there. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for part two, where we hear more heartfelt stories from Gary V. It's more than your random acts of kindness. You also have your intentional kindness, which you can feel through your music. And you have a brand new song called Make Us Whole Again, which is out on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and all online platforms. Uh, so people who are watching, please check it out. It's such a beautiful song. <laughs> all right, I'm good. Anything else here? That's it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Alicia>. <laughs> <laughs> I think you want to have a messy mascara now, Gary. It's your fault. No, I'm not the fault, oh, man. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> At least they were happy tears. G talk. <laughs>